Thank you, everyone. I'm uh, very excited to be up here to share about this library I wrote. It's actually only one file. That's why it's called log.gd. That's the file in the add-on library. And, uh, if you're watching on YouTube, that might not be true anymore, and so sorry. Uh, also, I'm camping on a pretty big part that might, you know, we need namespaces. I just called it log. It's a static class. Like, sorry. Uh, we're going to, this kind of, maybe this will be a, like a forcing function for, for namespaces. Um, so my goals for this talk, I really love this library. I use it in everything. I don't think I have any users. <laughs> maybe we'll get some feedback today. I don't know. If you have any ideas or anything, or if you, like future features, whatever. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about how it came together. And so I would love to inspire new Godot, Godot add-on dev. Um, and yeah, I'm fighting my fight or flight. Uh, so <laughs> freaking out. <laughs> Um, it's a little about me. I have a software engineering background. I did about 10 years of startups and mostly web apps data pipelines. I love scripting and automation and dev tools. You could nerd snipe me really easily with any of these topics. Um, it has happened a couple times already. I'm sorry. Uh, I love talking about window managers. Um, <laughs> I've been solo game devving for about three, year, three years. I love Godot. Uh, it's amazing. It's, the feedback loop is amazing. I have two Godot games on Steam. Um, currently trying to port one of them to mobile. Uh, yeah. Oh, and I want to give a huge shout out to especially the Gelatinous Cat Games. It's a studio I'm working with recently. They were super supportive. They uh, listened to the first version of this and uh, convinced me to switch to a light theme. And uh, <laughs> super helpful. And then the Indie Game Academy is a great online community for getting into games. Check it out. Um, so log GD at a glance. I really wanted this to be uh, the native print function, but this is actually just log printing with the colors disabled. I was lazy. I didn't feel like actually changing all the code. Um, but anyway, what we're seeing here that's big on the bottom is the, this is really just a replacement for the print function. On the bottom, we see it's a little bit of a more readable output. I was going to try to do a live demo, but uh, oop. Uh, we, maybe, that, maybe that image is later, but the major win is the line number and the file the print is coming from. And so we use the get stack command to like parse that out, put it in your logs. The other major feature is the colors. Uh, we're going to talk more about that. So here's the rough outline. I want to talk about organic add-on growth. We're going to talk about how print rich is great. Um, some public usage. And then hopefully we get to all this other stuff. Uh, yeah, so when I first got into solo game dev, my idea was do as many game jams as possible, just try to do lots of stuff. But of course, I wanted to over-engineer it immediately. How do we do all this in one Godot project? And so I have this crazy project, Dino, where I made a whole bunch of games. And this is just like a whole bunch of separate exports. You know, you can go create a new export, give it a new name. And then in the project settings, you can say, this is actually the main scene. Run this game. And I did a lot like trying to reduce the build size for that stuff. and. It's just a big mess in there. Uh, uh, but I also made a whole bunch of add-ons. And not all of those are mine over there. There's some really great ones that I use that are public. But a bunch of them are just ideas, things that I was toying with, trying to mess around with, trying to see like what actually survives, what is worth sharing, who knows. And so the whole thing about the monorepo is like reduce the overhead for exploring and trying new things. And LogGD is the first one that kind of came out of that. Here's a commit I found from two whole years ago. Um, and we have pretty much all the features. We don't have the line numbers. The braces, curly braces and square braces are like not colored. Like it's a huge problem. I fixed that though. So it's a lot more readable now. But um, yeah, finally got in the assets, asset library about a year ago. Um, yeah, it's basically just a wrapper over print rich. Uh, over in the bottom left, you're, I mean, you guys probably know this, but you can just search for all the functions in Godot right away. So there's a bunch of other prints there. At the bottom, there's prints and print t that just adds spaces and tabs between them. Log just does spaces between things automatically. Um, and the other big thing here is BB code. If you've never seen it, this yellow in the middle, I don't know if I have a mouse, but you were just wrapping things with color tags and a bold tag. So this yellow is saying, hello world, and it's going to make it bold and it's going to make it green. And so the log GD basically just tries to do that for every little piece of whatever you hand into it. And uh, yeah. So here's the public KPI. Uh, I'm going to take a deep breath. Whew. Uh, so it's very attic. It can have any number of arguments. 
Asterisk, it can actually only have seven. <laughs> if you need more, we could add them, but you probably don't need more. You can just pass an array. It's the same thing. Um, at the top, log PR, I would just use this instead of print everywhere you would use print. If you want a new line, just use the print PRN. The N stands for new line. Uh, info is like a print that I won't delete. It's just like a dev log. And then warn and error will print and colorize, add a warning, but it will also throw a warning or throw an error. So you kind of get it in both spots, the best of both worlds. Uh, now we're going to do a whole bunch of examples just to show it works on ints, it works on vectors, it works on string names. And we're seeing sort of the line numbers come in. And this is all from the log GD repo. There's an example scene with a bunch of code and uh, arrays. We see that PRN really is for arrays and dictionaries. It'll like make new lines. And I don't use it as often as I thought I would, to be honest. <laughs> Here we have dictionaries. Uh, when I first made this, Godot did not do this with dictionaries, and so library's not as cool as it was when Godot didn't do that. <laughs> Here you see the default is actually pretty good, um, but they don't have the colors yet, so <laughs> you guys need this. Uh, or we could maybe bake it into Godot itself. But anyway, when you print an object, it will do this thing, and so by default we just do this. But because we have duct typing, if you just implement a too pretty on your object, and return a data structure that's data, we can actually pull it apart and print name example scene there. So I'm going to go back just for a second in case folks didn't see all that. But yeah, it's pretty cool. And so you might do this for like a node, uh, node 2D or you know whatever you want. Um, so if you get nothing else, use log PR instead of print. And that is most of it. Oh, this is a requirement. You should not use print to debug things. It's not the way. Please use the debugger. All you have to do is go in and click on until there's a little red breakpoint, and then the code will stop, and you can walk the stack frames. And if you've never used a debugger, it's a thing. And then the remote scene tree is also great. I have to mention it. Um, this is how you debug. Logging is useful, but uh, use the debugger. Uh, get stack is really great. I'm going to skip by this because we don't have too much time, but it's just cool that there's like line numbers and function names and sources and stuff. Um, we have color schemes because we ran into trouble. There's quirks. When you try to use this, all of a sudden your output in the terminal or in the browser will be like a huge mess. And so I needed to switch to a term safe color scheme that we apply in certain situations. And there's still a little bit of work to like not use this when you're running in the browser or different places because um, it'll come out messy. Uh, these are things that I would love to support that we don't have, uh, but these are like project settings and stuff. I think there should be like way more of these, but I don't know what to do. So feel free to think about it and let me know what you think. Um, there's also a whole bunch of more logging tools since I first started this. Uh, Loggy looks really cool and has way more stars. Maybe you guys should check that one out. It's really cool. <laughs> uh, it does like per line coloring, which bothers me. I'm like, no, we want fine grain. Come on. Uh, and yeah, that's it.